Hello everybody, I am Dr. Nivedita Shetty, an infertility specialist practicing in Columbia Isha Hospital, Mysore. Infertility can affect about 10 to 15 percent of people, women, couple in the reproductive age group and is rising due to various reasons like late marriages and sedentary lifestyles, stressful lifestyles. Not having a child can be emotionally traumatic and unfortunately it's also considered a social stigma especially in the rural setup. In a low socioeconomic setup it's very often considered easier to get married again rather than go for treatment. So in the next few minutes I intend giving you a bird's eye view of infertility. We shall start by understanding what is infertility or rather subfertility. A couple is considered to be subfertile if they are unable to achieve pregnancy in 12 months of regular intercourse after 12 months of regular sexual intercourse without any contraception. I have had the privilege of meeting a very young couple married for about 2 years and not been able to conceive. On taking a detailed history you realize that this, this couple has been using condoms. So not using contraception is very important when you are trying to conceive. It could be as simple as that. So about 85% of couples do achieve a pregnancy after 12 months of regular intercourse. The remaining 15% should meet, uh, seek help, preferably from an infertility specialist of course. However, there's also exceptions to this rule. When we say 12 months duration, if there are late marriages where a woman has got married after she's 35 years, waiting for 12 months is not a wise decision. So in six months time, if she's not able to conceive, she should definitely seek help. There are women with irregular periods, which is an indication of polycystic ovary syndrome. There are people with extremely painful periods, which could be an indication of endometriosis. These are other people who should, other couples who should seek help early, not wait as long as a year. A word of advice for women with careers, which is no doubt very, very important because I believe women can contribute hugely to society and to the financial stability of the family. But what we need to remember as women is that the reproductive career runs parallelly with the professional career. It would be wise to complete your family of one or preferably two children within 35 years of age. A very important point that I like to stress on is that 50% of the time when we talk about subfertility, it is the male factor that contributes to it. In fact, in one third of couples, it's only the male factor that is responsible for the subfertility. So it's very wise that early on during the investigations, a semen analysis at least should be done, which would give us an idea if the male factor is also contributing to the subfertility. And in fact, it's strongly advised that the doctor is the doctor meets both the husband and wife early on during the treatment. In order to understand the treatment of infertility, we need to understand what causes infertility. I shall attempt to explain in a simplified manner. Now it's a well known fact that in order to get achieve a pregnancy, the egg factor and the semen factor have to be optimum. Very often the woman may have at one extreme no eggs or very less eggs and in the other extreme might have too many eggs, none of which are released every month. That is, no ovulation is happening every month. These are things that have to be addressed. The man also may have suboptimal semen, wherein the semen might not even contain any sperms at all, or it may contain less sperms, or the motility of the sperms might be less, which is very important in fertilizing the egg. The motile fraction is very important. There are times when both the egg factor is fine, the sperm factor is fine and there is a third factor that is called the tubal factor. The egg and sperm meet in the tube but if the tube is blocked, the egg and sperm are not going to get fertilized. The sperm is not going to be able to fertilize the egg. In fact, the first IVF in the world was done in 1978 for a woman with bilaterally tubed, bilateral blockage of tubes. Regarding the various options available for treatment, the level of treatment which is decided is based on the age of the woman, the duration of the marriage and the results of evaluation of the egg, sperm and tubal factor. The treatment is done in a stepwise fashion if all the parameters are within normal limits. Tracking the growth of the follicles 
confirming the timing of the ovulation and timing the intercourse is it is all that is needed the results are about 10% per cycle with this step now this is reflective of reproduction in human beings human beings the reproduction is flawed and it's only 10% even if everything is fine and they don't take any treatment if this step fails an intrauterine insemination is advised at the time of ovulation wherein the husband gives the semen to the laboratory and it is processed where a concentrate of motile sperms are inseminated into the uterus this is an inexpensive painless procedure and the results are about 20% per cycle if this both these procedure fails ivf or test tube baby is recommended ivf involves three stages the first stage being stimulation of the ovaries using daily injections for about roughly 10 days the, uh, fortunately the injections are less painful and similar to insulin injections once ready the follicles once the follicles are ready the eggs are collected by suction using a very fine needle now this is the second stage and this is performed under anesthesia it may take about half an hour the patient goes home the same day the sperms are also collected on the same day and processed and the sperm can be injected into the egg which is icsi or the sperm can be just placed with the eggs along with nutritional media both the eggs and the sperm once they placed in the dish they kept in the incubator along with the nutritional media and they are grown in the incubator for about 3 to 5 days once the embryo has achieved optimum development the embryo transfer is done now this is the third stage it's a painless procedure takes about uh, takes very less time and doesn't even need anesthesia the patient goes home the same day after a, after taking a rest of less than half an hour a blood test is done 2 weeks after the embryo transfer which confirms if the woman is pregnant if she is pregnant an ultrasound can be done a week later and that should show us that should reveal us the pregnancy on scan at the end i would like to conclude that it is important not to lose hope and give up because the next attempt could be could give us the desired result waiting for too long remember the biological clock is ticking furiously and as time passes the result doesn't get better as the egg quality goes downhill at columbia asia we have a state of the art ivf laboratory and very experienced staff so we might be able to help you and this is these two factors are very important in giving good results better results So please do not lose hope we are always with you for any guidance and support